the high-stakes summit between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin is over. And Paul Whelan was a key topic. But President Biden is promising to the family of the Novi man being held in a Russian labor camp. Former athletes sent a strong message to the University of Michigan as sexual abuse allegations against Dr. Robert Anderson continue to come in today. Ben. Karen, we made it two in a row now with pleasant conditions, but if you want more heat, humidity, and storms, you're going to get your wish. Kim? Twin siblings from Mumford High School will celebrate a major milestone today. I'll explain how they not only look alike on the outside, but they're also pretty similar up here. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. That breaking news coming out of the historic summit between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin. The two world leaders met for four hours today and talked about the Novi man being held in a Russian labor camp. President Biden spoke a short time ago about Paul Wheeling, Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with that and more key takeaways from their meeting. Good afternoon, Kim. Hi, Karen. President Biden says he will follow up on the talks he had today about Paul Whelan and another American detained in Russia. He promised he would not walk away from their cases. I made it clear to President Putin that we'll continue to raise issues of fundamental human rights because that's what we are. That's who we are. I raised the case of two wrongfully imprisoned American citizens, Paul Whelan and Trevor Reed. President Biden did not go into detail about what was discussed about the two men. Paul Whelan, as you know, was sentenced to 16 years for alleged spying. Trevor Reed is an American student convicted of assaulting a Moscow police officer in 2019. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he opened the door to talks about a prisoner swap, but the U.S. hasn't commented on that possibility. Biden and Putin met in Geneva, Switzerland, with other key topics, including Russian interference in U.S. elections and the recent cyber attacks. I talked about the proposition that certain critical infrastructure should be off limits to attack, period, by cyber or any other means. I gave them a list, if I'm not mistaken, I don't have it in front of me, 16 specific entities, 16 defined as critical infrastructure under U.S. policy, from the energy sector to our water systems. Putin described the meeting as constructive, saying there was no hostility among the two world leaders. President Biden called the talks positive, but said he isn't confident Putin will change his behavior. So, Karen, we're just uh, scratching the surface, really, of this meeting. We'll have much more coming up when you join us on Local 4 News at 5. For now, back to you. All right, we look forward to seeing you at 5. Thanks, Kim. Lester Holt will anchor Nightly News live from Geneva this evening. You can catch his reporting on what comes next at 6.30 after Local 4 News at 6. Former athletes are demanding the University of Michigan launch a full investigation into claims of sexual abuse by the late Dr. Robert Anderson. They came forward today with their stories of abuse and how the school failed to stop him. They're calling for the school's Board of Regents to allow the Attorney General's office to investigate. Last week, Attorney General Dana Nessel said a probe into the university's handling of reports can only happen if the board asks for a review. The survivors say the board, which meets tomorrow, must take action now. I stand here with my brothers and sisters and demand transparency. I call on the U of M Board of Regents to cooperate and to allow Attorney General's office to conduct a true investigation where all questions are not only asked but also answered. An investigation where everything is uncovered. University of Michigan put out this statement today. It reads, the University of Michigan is actively engaged in a confidential court-guided mediation process with the survivors of Dr. Anderson's abuse, and we remain focused on that process. The Dewan Sims missing persons case remains open this afternoon after Livonia police say a DNA test returns with no match. A man came forward on social media back in December of 2019 claiming that he could be Sims. Livonia police said today that no match was found. Dwan Sims was reported missing back on December 11, 1994, from the Wonderland Mall in Livonia. The case remains unsolved. Anyone with new information about the case is asked to contact the Livonia Police Department. A portion of two Metro Detroit freeways are back open after a road rage shooting happened this morning on I-96 at the Southfield Freeway. State police say two drivers were fighting with each other when one of the drivers fired a shot at the other, hitting his car. No one was hurt. 
police are investigating. The search continues this afternoon for a flat rock man wanted in the death of his wife. Amos Lowe is considered a person of interest in the murder investigation. His wife was found dead in a home on Sheik's Boulevard near Gibraltar Road yesterday. Police want to question Lowe. If you know where he is, call police. Time now for our first look at the forecast and really a great day out there, Ben. Yeah, and considering where we started this morning, some of us were wondering if we would get back to these marks. Uh, some of us were in the 30s uh, for low temperatures this morning, but there are mid 70s out there from most locations. Port Huron, one of the cool ones there at 66, but we don't have to worry about any thunderstorms this afternoon. It is going to be dry and pleasant. Another cool night tonight, just not quite as cold, so temperatures just into the low 60s there by midnight tonight. But the temperatures on the rise over the next few days. We do have two rounds of thunderstorms in the near future, and some of those could be severe. We'll track those. And uh, we are not accepting complaints for this weekend. We'll just let you know that in advance, and we'll show you the Saturday, Sunday numbers in just a few minutes. Karen? All right, that means I'm looking forward to that weekend forecast. Thanks, Ben. We do have some new coronavirus information. Cases are down again in Michigan. Today, the state reported 179 new cases and four more deaths. That is the lowest daily case count since June of 2020. The state's vaccination rate is slowly ticking up. 60.6% of Michiganders 16 and older have gotten at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. State Senate has voted unanimously to give more than $4 billion in federal COVID aid to K through 12 schools comes after Governor Whitmer and Republican lawmakers reached a deal on how to spend that money. Juneteenth is one step closer to becoming a federal holiday. A bill was passed by unanimous consent in the Senate. It now heads to the House, where it is expected to pass and be signed into law by President Biden. It's in recognition of June 19th, 1865. The day when news of the end of slavery reached slaves in the southwestern states. Coming up at 5, Victor Williams will bring you to the local commemorations happening today in honor of Juneteenth. A Detroit mother has so much to be proud of when she watches her twin daughters graduate in about an hour. They accomplished something few twins have ever done before. Kim DiGiulio introduces us to the impressive teens at the top of their class. Meet Andrea and Andrea Garwood. Today, they will graduate from Mumford High School as the class of 2021. You know, I graduate today at five. I get to speak. I'm a little nervous, but I get through it. Andrea is speaking because she's the salutatorian of her class. But get this, the valedictorian is her twin sister, Andrea. Born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. The two were asked to speak here at Focus Hope today prior to their graduation. It's an event with human IT about closing the digital divide. Everybody has to have access to devices. They've got to have internet access and they need to have access to careers. I'm excited to meet the mayor, um, just speak in front of everybody and explain why computers are so important. Andrea and Andrea were the talk of the event. That is an achievement to have two sisters living in the same house. It's like, okay, who's, who's, who's smarter? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? And so I can imagine being the parents of two students like that. That parent is their mom, Christina Garwood, who says her girls were never competitive with each other, just encouraging. They love school. They, they love tutoring the kids on the block. They mentors. Um, they just love, they love education. I, um, they, they come home, do their homework like immediately. They're not no procrastinators. They just love school. The girls say their mom is their role model. She got her uh, master's at University of Phoenix in business. Um, we want to be just like her. She's hardworking and just genuine and smart and beautiful. And she loves her so much. And she's a very hard worker. I love my mom. And while Andrea and Andrea are closing the door on one chapter, they're headed into the next chapter together. I think we work better together. The two are headed to Wayne State University on a full ride scholarship. Andrea and Andrea said that they're going to spend their first year living at home with their mom. In Detroit, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. What a great story. Thank you, Kim. At today's event at Focus Hope, the twins were given laptops to use at Wayne State. Well, first, they lost heat in a deadly cold snap. Now millions across Texas are being told to turn down their air conditioning in the middle of a heat wave. Why the utility company worries more power outages are possible. The maiden voyage of a Royal Caribbean cruise ship is delayed weeks because of a COVID outbreak in the crew. And everyone on board did get the COVID vaccine. First, watch as a murder suspect grabs hold of an officer's gun, refuses to let go. A scare inside that interrogation room next. 